Dear friends of the Tom Photo channel, hello to all new viewers. Thanks for joining me. For this episode, I did some time traveling. I went back to 2013 and picked up a Fujifilm XA1. Going back in time so many years may seem like serious time travel for some who constantly keep their finger on the technology pulse. You might say that even a few months can make a difference. I on the other hand think that time cannot undo good things that happened in the past. And I'd like to show you that Fuji X-A1 is such an example. Come to think of it, if a camera was said to take great pictures in 2013, how is it possible that these images are no longer good? They're the same images. When Fuji X-A1 came out, it was a small sensation in its time. The image quality was praised and this tiny camera was even called a giant killer. You could have a wonderful large APS-C sensor with 16 megapixels in such a tiny body and have so much control over taking pictures. Let me tell you how small this camera really is. 117 by 67 by 39 millimeters. It weighs just 330 grams together with the battery. In the background, you'll see some of the images I took in the city with the Fuji XC 16 to 50 mm lens attached. I used Velvia film simulation and color minus two to get a bit more pleasing washed out effect but still get the overall Velvia color balance. This camera and lens are from the same era. This is why I combined them. I was unnoticeable in the city with this small setup and this made me comfortable. I felt I wanted to photograph in the public space. I don't have this feeling with larger cameras. I felt I wanted to travel together with this camera. Technically speaking, the pictures out of the X-A1 are very, very fine. The camera is old and very cheap and can deliver like this. Why would many people not look at the gems from the past? People, most likely this is all you need. If you're a casual photographer, I don't see why go out and pay 10 times more. This camera delivers to make you smile. Some of its image quality comes from the relatively small number of uh, pixels on the sensor. This means that the pixels are large and well separated. This translates into low noise and create low light performance. I'm an advocate of less pixels of higher quality than lots of noisy pixels that generate huge file size. Really, 16 megapixels is adequate for most purposes. When looking at this camera, I'll compare it with other Fujis slightly higher in the ranks. I'll mostly talk about what it does not have and if this matters. But it has a lot. For example, both the built-in flash and the hot shoe. It has a dedicated exposure compensation button in the corner. For some reason it has no markings and you have to look at the screen to see what the value is. A small annoyance, nothing terrible here. It even has an articulated back screen with 920,000 dots that turns up and down and comes out. Even somewhat newer XE2 doesn't have that. And one more time, it has an APS-C sensor with dimensions of 23.6 times 15.6 millimeters. This is great. The sensor is not an X-Trans like in the newer Fujis, but it's a conventional bare filter sensor. Does it matter if it delivers so well? The X-Trans is said to have a better more control. One curious feature comes up when modifying the images with GIMP. An average JPEG of this camera is about 6 megabytes. If you resave it and don't want to increase the file size, you have to choose a quality setting of about 92. With the X-Trans sensors, I find this value is about 96. I'm not entirely sure what this means. The XA1 has Wi-Fi. People should like that. These non-photography extras matter less in my book. What are some of the things that uh, it doesn't have and I do miss? Most notably, there's no viewfinder. You take pictures like you take with a cell phone, the non-professional way. The back screen is not touch sensitive. This is something I don't miss too much. Many of you would, though. It has no time-lapse capabilities, meaning that you cannot program it to automatically take pictures every so many seconds. You only have just five Fujifilm film simulations, 
the most basic, Provia, Astia, Velvia, black and white, and Sepia. This is already an average grade problem because people often buy Fuji's for their amazing film simulations. Fuji is known to be among the best brands for shooting JPEG. The camera has no external microphone port. This matters when making videos. I'm not planning on using this camera for videos. It doesn't excel at that. Its best video settings are HD at 30 frames per second. Obviously such a small camera has no weather protection or in-body image stabilization. The zoom lenses of its own era have wonderful image stabilization though. The camera is made of plastic. Its build quality is maybe lower than we are used to seeing in Fuji's, but the camera feels really solid and does not feel cheap. Well, if you don't consider the flash. When it jumps out, it remains so delicately attached to the camera that I wonder if it will continue flying much farther when I release it again next time. I also noticed that the XA1 responded slower to my pressing of the buttons. It had a lag between pressing a shutter release and recording a picture. Also, there is a small lag for the camera to wake up after pressing the on-off button. I'm quite sensitive to that. And I don't know if it's just my camera or not, but the on-off switch is quite stiff to use. Although the XA1 has a grid for helping to compose the shot, it doesn't have the luxurious option of electronic level as you'll find in later Fuji cameras. It does not have an optional electronic shutter that would make it fully silent when that's needed. It may seem to you that I've been finding many things wrong with this camera. Not so. The points I made were not real problems, they were characteristics of the camera. There's so much to like about this camera in addition to its superb image quality and small size. I like that it has the familiar Fuji menu. Fuji menu is not the most logical of camera menus, but I like that they stick to their style throughout their camera lineup. This gives all of their cameras a similar feel. The buttons are small but well positioned. The camera doesn't have the dedicated focus lock or exposure lock buttons I'm used to seeing in more expensive Fuji cameras. I find I'd use these mostly for video. The four-way pad is convenient for selecting the region on the screen that you want to use for focusing. You have to activate it by pressing the up direction before you can change the focus point. I'm not a fan of this because if you press the wrong direction first, you end up entering a menu you don't want. Unlike most other Fujis, this camera does not have a lever style button next to the lens mount that lets you choose between single focus, continuous focus and manual focus. This is achieved via menu and is not optimal. However, the manual focus even comes with focus peaking. This is really great, apart from the fact that you cannot choose your favorite color for it and the standard white is sometimes not too visible. Still it means that you can use your XA1 with all manual lenses you manage to attach to the body. The batteries are standard and last a long time. You have to use charger to charge them. You cannot do it inside the camera. Behind the small door you have two sockets. One is HDMI, the other lets you connect the USB cable if you want to download your pictures this way. Question: What is it that matters to you in a camera? For me it's mainly three things, image quality, build quality, handling, in that order. The camera scores well in all categories but especially high in the image quality category. Add the bonus of very low price as a used camera and you get a package that's easy to recommend with confidence. Of course I should admit that I have yet to see a Fuji I would not recommend at all. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me, I appreciate it. If you're willing to consider subscribing to my channel, that would be wonderful. I hope to see you again in my future and past videos. Have a great day.